Hello Booktube! In this episode of my 2024 library tour, I am continuing on with part 4 of my science fiction and fantasy collection, which is the lower of four shelves on this first side of a double-sided shelving unit that I use as a double-sided bookcase. Um... So, as I ended um, part three with Neil Gaiman, I will begin part three with Neil Gaiman, American Gods. So, I first had a copy of American Gods back in 2003-2004 from the Science Fiction Book Club and read it and didn't quite get on with it. So, American Gods is a contemporary epic fantasy set in America in the United States, about an ex-con named uh, Shadow Moon, who is hired by a con man who claims to be the god Odin, he actually is, um, who is gathering all of the um, various incarnations, of, or American incarnations of various old world and new world gods together to confront uh, new gods who are uh, powered by humanity's belief in technology. And Shadow has to sort of navigate this conflict. Uh, after I bailed on it, I got rid of that copy and later checked it out, a copy out from my local library and read it, and I liked it a little bit better. Um, enough to buy a copy although I've never actually gotten around to reading this copy. The next few books are by William Gibson. First up is Burning Chrome, which is a collection of short stories and I think some nonfiction pieces. I picked this up from uh, the Friends of the Library book sale alcove at the West Waco Library and Genealogy Center. Um, in the lobby, there's a little cove um, where they have some, usually it's either like discarded or withdrawn books or lesser quality donated books and also magazines. Although I don't know if it's still out there because I haven't been to that library in a while now, thanks to the pandemic. I haven't actually, I've read Burning Crumb before and I, Remember it quite fondly, but I've never read anything actually from here. I also have the first two in the Sprawl uh, trilogy, Neuromancer, which I picked up in San Francisco, and I've read a few times, I think. I know for sure I've read it once. I don't know if I've reread it. Um, but I, I liked it. It was okay. I liked Count Zero a bit more, though, if I remember correctly. But I haven't read either one for years. Probably the better part of 15, if not more years. Uh, this is The Difference Engine by William Gibson and Bruce Sterling. So this is one of a early example of steampunk. Um, I've never gotten around to reading it, though. I don't quite remember where I bought it from either. So, the next two books are by Max Gladstone. They're part of the craft sequence. Uh, first up is Three Parts Dead, um, and also uh, Two Serpents Rise. So, the craft sequence is a new weird urban fantasy series um, that basically brings the whole kitchen sink of fantasy together. Um, both of these volumes are examples of the question, why exactly do I have these in my collection? Because I checked both of them out from my library and I really, I don't think I like them enough if at all, to really add them to my collection. So I don't quite know why I have them. 
although I haven't read them since I checked them up from the library. So these two are probably definitely candidates for, I think, a purge at some point. Next up is uh, The Magicians by Lev Grossman. This is in part urban fantasy or contemporary fantasy and in part, and in part portal fantasy. So it's basically about a young man named Quentin Coldwater who learns that he has magical abilities and he is invited to attend Breakbuilds, which is a university for magical studies. And as he approaches graduation or graduates, I've never gotten that far, um, he discovers that this children's um, series that he loved as a child which is basically Narnia, um, is real. And he and his college friends travel to this place and have adventures and cause all sorts of chaos. Um, I've read this to, I think, shortly after the Antarctica part of the story. And while there are certain things about the book that I like, uh, there are a lot of other things that I don't like, and I've never really gone back to reread it. I think I might have tried a few times, but I was never quite in the mood. Next is Mage's Blood, which is the first book in the Moontide Quartet by David Hare. I picked this up uh, several years ago from one of the uh, sellers on Elibris, and I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> I have no idea why I have this book. <laughs> so either I need to try and chapter it, or uh, unhaul it at the next book purge. Okay, so when I do the other side, I need to not sit like this. I'll have to make a note of that. This is how I'm sitting is making pulling these books a bit complicated. Uh, this is The Time of the Dark by Barbara Hambly. I'm thinking this is a contemporary fantasy given the cover, um, but I don't know much about it. I picked it up from the Friends of the Library book sale nook and never gotten around to it. I think most of the older science fiction and fantasy mass markets that I have, I did pull from there, whether in this book haul or previous book haul, uh, library tours, or even unhauls. So this is another example of The Star Kings by Edmund Hamilton. I don't know if this is a novel, like a bind-up novel, or um, a short story collection, because I know The Star Kings was a short story because I read it a few years ago in the big book of um, science fiction edited by the Vendermeers. Vendermeers. Um, so, yeah, I haven't gotten around to it yet. There is a book tip event in July called Rocket July, which is focusing on vintage science fiction and fantasy, or at least science fiction. So I might read, have a go at this for that event, if I'm in the mood, and if I'm not super swamped. Let's check to make sure. Yep, it'll work. So the next two books are by Gareth Hanrahan. Uh, they're the first two books in a trilogy, which I do not have the third. And given the way the, the second uh, volume worked out, I will not be getting the third volume, even though I might actually still have it on my wish list. I'll have to go and check that. Anyway, so first up is The Gutter Prayer. So, um, Gutter Prayer, and then, which is, so the series is called The Black Iron Legacy. So it's basically a new weird, um, not quite epic fantasy, certainly I think a bit grimdark, um, about a young woman and her friends who are thieves who kind of get involved in things that are a bit over their heads. 
and they're each transformed in one way, shape, or formed by the end of it. Um, I thought this book was okay. Um, there's some really good moments to it. Um, but I don't think it really was enough for me to want to continue with the series, which I didn't know until later. Um, so the second volume in the series is The Shadow Saint, which is, takes the story a bit more wider afield, um, but doesn't really work as well as The Gutter Prayer. So I'm definitely probably at my next purging going to get rid of. The next book is an omnibus edition of Berconium novels by M. John Harrison. Uh, this includes um, and it's also a example of New Weird. So I think I will do some sort of new weird quip uh, in the kind of title of this video. <clears throat> Eventually, I will get to the content. So this uh, volume includes Pastoral City, A Storm of Wings, and Vericonium, The Lamia and Lord Chromis, Vericonium Knights, The Luck in the Head, um, Strange Great Sins, Lords of Misrule, The Dancer from the Dance, and A Young Man's Journey to Vericonium. So I had to go at the Pastel City uh, several years ago, and I didn't quite get on with it. Um, although a number of other booktubers in this corner, booktube, who are uh, rather fond of science fiction and fantasy, do rather like the Vericonium novels. The next four, uh, in the final four, um, books on this shelf are um, anthologies in part edited by David G. Hartwell, who was a prominent editor of science fiction and fantasy in the later part of the 20th century and into the early 21st century before his passing, I think, sometime in the 2010s. Um, first up, uh, so the first three are edited in a conjunction with Catherine Kramer. Uh, this first one is The Ascent of Wonder, The Evolution of Hard SF. So this uh, book contains a number of um, science fiction stories that can be considered hard science fiction, which is a subgenre of science fiction that takes a more rigorous approach to the science, um, tries to get the science as close to what it could actually be compared to, say, the more fantastical elements of, say, what you would find in Star Trek or Star Wars or Dune. So there's no FTL, there's no psionics, there's, or at least I don't think so. I could be wrong about that. But anyway, so this is uh, the uh, first volume in a real duology, um, although it does not do the timelines on when these were published. But he all, Kramer, uh, or Hartwell and Kramer, also came out with another anthology card, uh, called the Hard SF Renaissance, which looks at the um, a more recent sort of flourishing of um, hard science fiction. And to not leave Space Opera um, alone. They also did the Space Opera Renaissance, which I've dipped into. I've also dipped into, I think, The Ascent of Wonder. Um, so yeah, this is a collection of, excuse me, Space Opera that begins with Lee Brackett and Edmund Hamilton and goes to um, Alistair Reynolds and John C. Wright and Charles Strauss in the early 21st century. So these three anthologies, I'm fairly confident I would keep. Um, this final 
anthology, not so much. And that is the Sword and Sorcery Anthology, edited by Hartwell and Jacob Weissman. So, I have mixed feelings for Sword and Sorcery. There's a part of the genre that is rather attractive, although the part that I'm more attracted to is not necessarily the part that most Sword and Sorcery fans are attracted to. They're more attracted to the sword. I'm more attracted to the sorcery. Um, I found this anthology to, I mean, ha has some good stories. I mean, at least The Tower of the Elephant by Robert E. Howard. Um, but, I mean, the rest that I read were not all that impressive. So, this one I will likely get rid of. Um, so that concludes part four of my of the science fiction and fantasy section of my 2024 library tour. I will be back tomorrow with part five, where I will be on the other side of this bookcase and also standing up. Anyway, booktube and tally, see you tomorrow. Thank you, have a great afternoon, and stay safe.